hi everyone welcome back to beyond your knowledge so today we're going to be, to be talking about the side effects of the corticosteroids okay so and now before we continue i would like to share with you isaiah 43.2 and Isaiah 43.2 says that when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you Amen well so this is a beautiful promise so now we're going to see the side effects of the corticosteroids first so the corticosteroids are immuno suppressive so the corticosteroids so um, we use to suppress the immune system for this reason they are immuno suppressive and corticosteroid we use for different diseases okay and they have several effects and one example of the corticosteroids is for example prednisone okay um, prednisone um, can treat for example uh, many autoimmune and inflammatory diseases or condition okay so because immunosuppressors so we can treat the autoimmune autoimmune diseases or inflammatory diseases okay now also another thing that we should know about the corticosteroids so we can treat uh, diseases like um, systemic lupus erythematose okay and others now there are the corticosteroids can induce i mean can cause several side effects okay so several side effects and to see those several side effects we are going to do a table here so and um, we're going to see those side effects okay and then we're going to see the the organ or the area which is affected okay organ or affected area this side and then on the other side so we are going to see here we are going to see the what um the what we see okay or the consequence or the side effect okay the side effect basically we're going to see there okay so we're going to start for example how it's going to look your skin okay and also your musculoskeletal okay so basically the musculoskeletal and your skin the patients is going to have central obesity okay and uh, in the central obesity also they can have a buffalo hump okay now i will show you the picture of a buffalo hump here so basically this is how present okay here you see how is the elevation and also here this is buffalo hump now also the patients uh, when they have a uh, side effects of the of the of the corticosteroids uh, in the skin or the musculoskeletal they can have also the skin is going to be atrophy okay and beside to that one the patient also can develop bruciability so basically the patient so the bruciability so basically the patient has a low um, collagen or also is going to be a uh, low collagen and fibroblast okay now um, patient that can also decide to have a um, side effect of the corticosteroid or patient that can have um, these symptoms for example um, buffalo home uh, central obesity and bruciability the patient that has a kuchin disease i'm going to write it down, down here okay Kuchin disease, and now I will um, show you a picture of a patient that has a disability. So this one here, okay. So this one, the, the person is like this, okay. And or the, um, we can see another one more picture here. So another patient has that. 
so for example like this one so but this one is in the patient that has a so this one is in a patient that has a coaching disease and this one is another patient so it could be by coaching disease or because he's using corticosteroid okay so but the point here that this is uh, those things is the um, the versatility so you can see right there or you can see also he see here well so with that in mind so we can come back and what another side effects we are going to see in those patients um, well now we are going to go to another organ so which now is going to be gastrointestinal the gastrointestinal tract um, the patient is going to present with peptic ulcer and if the patient present with peptic ulcer you know that the consequence is going to be hemorrhage and gastrointestinal bleeding and if the patient has a gastrointestinal bleeding it is it is not good because decrease your prostate glandings okay also the patient is going to present with um, with symptoms of fatigue and all the things now what about if the patient has uh, the, the endocrine system the endocrine system also is going to be affected by the side effects of the corticosteroids okay Um, in this one the endocrine so we need to remember that there is a an axis and this is good which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis and it's going to be suppressed okay it's going to occur suppression of that one and also in endocrine the other one is that the patient can present with hyperglycemia so that's mean that the patient that have hyperglycemia has high levels of glucose okay and all the patient can present with the hypogonadism and which is at the gonads and hypogon uh, i'm sorry what is going on? yeah so hypo <laughs> oh sorry it's speaking crazy okay hypo yeah hypogonadism there we go Hypogonadism is going to be how le low levels of the of the gonads and that involve your um, um, gonadotropin release hormones. Okay, gonadotropin release hormone gonads hypogonadism. Also, in the endocrine system, the patients can present with osteoporosis. And just a quick note: so who has more chance to get osteoporosis? the afro-american or the caucasian yes you are right so it is the the caucasian has more chance to get osteoporosis now if you see a patient who is given corticosteroid plus is caucasian so the it's higher the the, the probability that this person get osteoporosis and osteoporosis that means that there is a decrease of the bone formation and if you cannot um, uh, form your bones, it become weak, and then you can get fractures. Also, decrease your absorption of calcium and phosphorus. Okay, absorption is decreased. Now, uh, absorb. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah so and then the other system that we're going to see it is the immune system i'm going to go to a new slide okay so to mention the immune and the immune system so what we're going to see in the immune system so in the immune system we are going to see that the patient has a neutrophilia and neutrophilia so that's mean that there is going to be neutrophil demargination what does that mean so neutrophil demargination I'm going to explain now so let me just get some room here so that we can understand what is uh, so demargination so basically this is your vessels okay so this is your vessels and now the neutrophils are here okay at the margin so they are here and all the bloods go here okay so all the blood goes there now let's just say that here is an infection or there is something um, in this area here and 
yeah also the red blood cells are traveling okay this is in the red blood cells and yeah so the neutrophils are here this is the blood so this is the neutrophils are here and here we have the blood with the red blood cells and now let's just say that there is an something here infection or something and so they receive the the signal and when do they do the neutrophil just come off from that wall and they just travel and this is called demargination when they come out from the margin or from the border of the edge of the of the of the vessels okay now also in the immune system another thing that can cause the corticosteroids is it is an it is an immunosuppression for this reason those patients they get uh, immunosuppression and when they get immunosuppression what's happened so they're going to have their in their, their um the immune system is going to be low and if they have more risk for, um or m high risk of getting infections and all of the things and now one more things in immune system is that increase as i mentioned increase the risk of infection okay yeah so risk of infection increase because the patient is immunosuppressed okay okay um infection there you go i'm going to repeat and i also write it infection well basically this is the immune system now the nervous system you say oh but yeah how corticosteroid is going to affect your nervous system well it is pretty simple so the nervous system the patient is going to have hypomania okay and also the patient can have psychosis so hypomania just to understand better what it is so basically hypomania it is when it is a malform of mania okay and this malform of mania so the patient has an uh, mark um, I mean the patient is going to be very super happy super high hyperactivity all those things okay so which um, also the patient can present with a psychosis and so the, the psychotic patient so this patient with psychosis they are disconnected with the reality okay so imagine a patient who is disconnected um, which is disconnected uh, from the reality and, and a patient with a hypomania with the, they, 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 they are in this super hyperactivity and excitability so all those things can be caused by corticosteroids and I know if all things also can cause this but now we're focusing on the corticosteroid and also makes sense because if you are psychotic and if you have hypomania so you are going to have sleep disturbances okay so this patient sometimes doesn't want to sleep now there are general diseases that can cause for example this which is bipolar disorder which is one of those psychotic disorder but probably we can just discuss those later on in another video now that was nervous system and we are almost done we cover almost all the system <laughs> pretty much so the last one is going to be respiratory system so the respiratory system so this one that is going to be production or there is going to be increasing production of surfactant okay surfactant and now it is uh, it is important because we need surfactant for the alveoli okay and also the the surfactant uh, um, it needs to be for the maturation of the lungs when the baby is also yeah I would like to uh, mention a couple more things about I mean a few more things about surfactant so basically surfactant is produced also by the type 2 pneumocytes and um, they secrete the primary surfactant and so decrease the the um the alveolar surface tension so that's mean that prevents the alveolar to collapse also um decrease your lung recoil and compliance okay 
so surfactant also has an, a ratio that we should mention here which is um, I mean basically um, the, the, the surfactant yeah it is important for the ferrous and the pulmonary surfactant is a complex mix of of lacy things and the most important of which is dipamitoyl phosphatidylcholine okay so and then the when when does the surfactant uh, synthesis begins so in the ferrous so it's going to to begins around 26 weeks okay so around 26 weeks and of the gestation but when is going to mature so it's going to mature uh, at the levels and until until the age of 35 weeks okay so for this reason we always try that the baby so that the fetus so reach more than 35 weeks if it's premature it is dangerous and for this reason we 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 use corticosteroid to increase the the levels of surfactant another point that i would like to mention here about the surfactant um for example in chemistry when they are using and then ha they have a hydrophilic and hydro um phobic, so um molecules so they use it for the hydrophobic molecules so that's that they can uh uh, yeah, so that they can uh, w w work together. So basically, helps for that. This is base. Um, this is surfactant. So there are more uh, details or more things about the the, the surfactants, but probably we will um, see it in another in another video. Um, yeah. So because this is just mostly for the corticosteroid, I just wanted to give some background. So basically that was the organs, the corticosteroids being affected and now we are going to see um, here there are some some uh, the, um, the corticosteroid receptors okay so what's going on with the corticos so with the corticosteroid receptors so um, they have also um, some um, physiologic effects okay so and those as physiologic effects are important because they can they can um, they include for example the leukocytes um, in the circulatory system okay and also the vascular endothelial cells so now you can know that when the patient is uh, taking um, uh, corticosteroid receptors so the physiologic effects that can be um, um, that the corticosteroid can work is in the leukocytes or in the vascular endothelial cells okay now also that is something that we can check um, in the CBC so when you do the test you can say the CBC the and then in the in the CBC you check the neutrophils and when you check the neutrophils they are going to be increased okay so that means that the neutrophils are going to be high okay and yeah okay so now um also but but the 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 the, the, the this neutrophils uh, counts is going to be uh, increased so after the um i mean the following administration of 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 the drug okay so so any so in this case corticosteroid for example we can take as a prednisone as an example and then you check the neutrophils and then the neutrophils are going to be yeah, the, those, those neutrophils are going to be high and also this process as we mentioned so it's called demargination okay when they come out so demargination and so because they were previously attached to the wall so and i think that we mentioned right here so we mentioned right here so that the neutrophils were here on the wall okay so they are here and then so there are some red blood cells so sorry so some red blood cells there are some red blood cells circulating so here on the blood and then when you have when you give to the patients the drug 
so the patient is taking the drug then the drug is going to enter to the to the system and then all those is going to leave so all is going to leave and it goes to those not are going to leave and this is called demargination okay so now um sorry i increased my voice there and i get excited so yeah yeah let's just continue yeah, so those neutrophils that were previously here attached, so now the, now therefore those uh, neutrophils, they, they, the, the purpose is that they are recruited to fight any infections, okay? Now, so the, the neutrophils recruitment to fight infection in tissues is decreased, so and then this potentially um, contributing to increased infection risk, because basically what, what's going on? So imagine, let's just do it uh, in this way. So you are, you sign up for the army, okay? So you sign up for the army. And then, so they have a base in the army, okay? Everybody is waiting over there. If something happens, so everybody come out to, to fight, okay? But now, if those uh, if those soldiers that from the army, instead of in being in the base, so representing the neutrophils, instead of being here on the wall of the vessels, so they are just moving all around the, the 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 field or everywhere but they are not in the place that they should be so when the attack comes so there will not be enough um defense and that's happened with the neutrophils so the neutrophils instead of being um instead of being in their spot here on the wall like the base so now they are all around on the blood instead of the uh, instead of the wall so and then when the infection and then when the infection comes so they 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 they, they don't receive basically the signal to go to the infection and for this reason the patient that has uh, that is taking a uh, corticosteroids so have a high risk of infections okay so and i think that uh, i hope that it would be clear and so that was just uh, yeah so now i think that we are done with this so i hope that you enjoy and if you have any question just um just let us know okay you can write on and you, you can check this in our um channel okay i'm sorry this is not the, that that one doesn't go there yeah so but yeah so have a blessed day and may god bless you and all that you do that god can strengthen your heart god bless